check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. What's up? What's down? What is going on around? I'm Paolo Li Sing, founder of StartupInTaiwan.com. This show is about foreigners living here in Taiwan, either for business, school, or just hanging around. So if you have questions, just leave it in the comment section below. Today is a very special day in Taiwan because it's actually election day. And we are very honored to have one foreigner guest who will tell about his experience about voting as a foreigner here in Taiwan. But before we start this program, this program is actually hosted by Space21, a co-working space for foreigners. And we have a promo here of free one month's rent, either for office space, office address, if you, if you pay for the 12 month uh, contract. All right, let's head on to our topic. So our guest for today is Bonnie Cross, an artist from South Africa. Welcome to the show, Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you for this super quick notice. And while we're filming this, I guess the precincts are still taking in some of their votes. Uh, and this is why I wanted to actually ask you about your experience. First question, where are you from? Um, well, I'm from all over the place. My dad is originally from South Africa. He uh, moved to Kenya, Nairobi, where I was born, and I uh, ended up, uh, we ended up moving to Uganda after that. And uh, most of my, uh, most of the part of my life has been in Uganda. Uh, but uh, recently, probably 10 years ago, I went back to South Africa to connect with my family. Wow. And how long have you been here in Taiwan? I have been in Taiwan for six years. Wow. And may I ask, how did you get here and why Taiwan is a good country for you to stay? Yeah, right. So I met up with a friend and uh, uh, who came to Uganda mm -hmm. and uh, I was I used to be a singer. Wow. Um, and I was encouraged just to come here and try out my skills in Taiwan based on the fact that there are not many foreigners who are prepared. Professional. They're musicians, but they do not do it professionally. So I was encouraged to come over here and kind of share what I have from Africa. I'm a music teacher and I've been trained both classically and, you know, uh, contemporary. Wow. So that's how I ended up, you know, coming to Taiwan. All right. Let's go straight to the topic at hand because this is basically a good season. This today is actually an election day in Taiwan, and what caught my attention is you posting on foreigners uh, in Taiwan Facebook page saying that you are the first black uh, from South Africa who's able to vote, and that actually caught my attention. So, how did you get to vote? So anyway, uh, you know, after staying here for you know the six years. I went ahead and the first thing that I actually did was to make sure that I get all my documentation right in terms of staying in Taiwan. Okay. And, you know, every, uh, like all the nitty gritties, I made sure everything was done. I registered for everything. I paid my taxes. Uh, you know, I kept myself updated with all, you know, all the updates about foreigners living in Taiwan and all that. And uh, knowing when can I uh, advance to the next level in terms of living in this country? Because, you know, you usually start with an ARC, which is an alien resident certificate. And you can move ahead and go to, you know, an APRC. Which, which I have. A, uh, you yeah. know, an alien, oh, yes, alien permanent resident certificate. Uh, now, I had an option um, based on, you know, on um, um, my stay here to, you know, buy for citizenship. And the, the only catch was I was supposed to renounce my citizenship back home and be a na uh, naturalized person. And it was quite a process because it happened during COVID time. I literally had to go back home, but, but the household registration office uh, decided not to have me go back home because of travel restrictions and everything. Nice. And they said all I had to do was to make sure that I got all the documentation straight by connecting and coordinating with the respective embassy that I had to, uh, you know, so that they could verify what was going on. All right. So that actually talks about the process. Um, yeah. Is it difficult for foreign? Uh, I want to go straight to voting. Uh, where do you officially vote? Which location? I vote from Keelong. 
um, too long. I'll, I'll, it is Jijin second row, but the city is Keelong. The okay. district is Anla district. Okay, I want to know the process. Do you think it's very difficult for foreigners to cast their vote? It is not at all. It's not difficult for anybody. With my experience today, because uh, I work on Saturday, so I had planned this for almost two months, I guess. And I was like, I'm gonna cast my vote, you know, be you know a responsible citizen, exercise my duties. Uh, it's been a while since I last voted, and when I realized that I had it right and I could, and I was entitled to vote here, I planned for it and I just went there today. It took me five minutes for the wow. whole process to yeah five minutes. That was quite easy. That was quite easy. And you know the, the communication was basic. The people are friendly, uh, quite helpful as well. So yeah, it is, it's a smooth process, I should say. Uh, are the forms in English or in Chinese? Uh, how come the you're forms to... are in Chinese? But I got a briefing on what was required of me, or what I was required to do. But also another thing is like most of the things are straightforward because you can see the pictures of who you want to vote for. Because I've been like studying like all the people being, that I want to vote for and you know, I just went for that. Yeah. I guess um, the other the deeper question is why do you feel the need or the urge to vote as a foreigner who is newly a Taiwanese citizen, I may say? Yes, right. So the thing is... Um, I'm a leader. I, I have a band here. I, I have the only African band in Taiwan, musical band. Mm. Um, I'm a teacher as well and educator. So we teach children these things and we tell them, hey, it's your duty to do this, to do that, and to do this. And so whatever I teach the kids, I should be able to do it as well. Mm -hmm. be an example. So if I'm eligible to vote in Taiwan, I'll definitely take the opportunity to do it, regardless of who I am, a local or a foreigner. As long as I'm eligible to do something that makes me exercise my rights, I will do it. Um, okay, so I guess you prepared well for the elections. Uh, what? Uh, why do you vote? What are you hoping or wishing for the next candidate who will win, at least within your area in Geelong? Well, I think... But what I'm looking forward to is basically to have that inclusion of foreigners, you know, in the society, especially where I come from. Uh, it's a closed society. I'll tell you a story, a personal one. I have not, I've only talked to one person in six years. In, in Taipei? Oh, okay. No, in Kilong. Yeah, in Taipei, you know, I mean, like I told you, I have a band, so I meet a lot of people, it's all good. But in Keelong, I've only spoken to one person for six years. There's an old guy who can speak some English. I'd rather speak Chinese too. But the thing is, like, I don't know what it is, but people are not so open and outgoing. But another thing I've learned, like, when you approach them, they are not rude at all. They're good. They're polite. Correct. But my point is, I hope that that could be because I think the leaders can work it out in a sense that oh these guys are part of the community. I've had incidents because I do private classes too, and you go to a place and you're almost kicked out. Oh my! Because yeah, and you know me being firm because I know who I am. I'm a citizen here. You can't just kick me out. So I've always got, and I'm not a I'm not a criminal, you know. So mm -hmm. I'll stand on my ground and like yeah, listen, you 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 know, let's do respect each other, you know, and you know, I'm just. Uh, a resident just like me here. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, I guess you also answered the last question, but I, I want to add a, a little bit more into, uh, in general, do you think the lives of the foreigners here in Taiwan uh, could be improved further? Let's say, uh, let's avoid the topic of, of, of inclusion. What about the facilities? What about uh, the technology or any, any other things other than that? Yeah, now, since this country is trying to, you know, uh, transition into a bilingual country, mm -hmm. I think it's really important to, you know, do it in a realistic way in terms of, like, you're talking about technology now. 
it's hard. It's kind of challenging or challenging for me to know what's going on, especially if everything is written in Chinese and there's no, uh, no like English provision, mm -hmm. know what is going on or what I'm, I'm supposed to do. Luckily enough, I've been able to meet some people at different offices who speak English. So that's kind of helping. But sometimes you feel like you get stuck because you're looking at a country that is saying in 2030, which is like eight years from now, we're gonna turn bilingual, but still there are a lot of things that don't show that, you know, we're on that track, you know? And I guess that's also one of the blocking points in terms of people approaching you because maybe their English is not as good. So when you approach yeah. them, they're very kind, but as far as them approaching foreigners, it's still, there's still that uh, language barrier, but, uh, I'm sure the government is also working on, on you know, on improving the English proficiency of many people here. And uh, as far as I am concerned, I'm able to actually live up, uh, live around Taiwan, at least in Taipei, and have my basic Chinese plus my English, uh, you know, working with, uh, well. So I guess that's the end of our program. I really thank you for this uh, quick notice. And if you have any wish or any anything that you would like uh, our audience to uh, to help you with, uh, this is the time for you to ask them. All right. Um, thank you so much, first of all, for you know this opportunity. And I mean, like you said, it was like on short notice. And like <laughs> my philosophy, I wouldn't have done it, but following you and seeing the things you do, you're legit. And, uh, you know, I, I respect that. So, you know, I was like, I gotta be part of this. It's either today or no, no any other day. Yeah, thank you so, so much. To the, sure, to the viewers, what I'd like to say is, uh, I think as both locals and foreigners, we, let's just live in peace, you know, cause we have bigger challenges than ourselves. You know, we got, and, and we know this, we know this. But also personally talking about myself, uh, I'm an author. I write books, and uh, you know I have a band. Like I said already, I'm in, I'm in the entertainment scene in this country. So you know, if you ever get a chance to check out my works, just follow me on Instagram. It's Bonnie Cross Lee. I'll uh, put that's the B O N D Y K R O S S L E E. Crosses with a K. And, or I will. Uh, you know, or I so, will put those links in the description below. So yeah, we'll follow. Definitely, you. yeah. So basically, just support. And uh, let's work it out together. I'm a citizen here, but still feel like a foreigner in many ways. But, you know, so, so far, so good. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Me too. Bye-bye. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.